take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Martin Street and all of God's people again. We want to thank you for joining us for our Sunday morning worship experience. Let us look unto the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, again, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to wake up this morning and see the dawning of a new day. Oh, Father God, that movement we felt on the earth, Father God, was a movement caused by you. And so, Father God, we pray now that you would continue to move amongst your people, Father God, and move in a mighty, mighty way, Father God. Move in such a way, Lord, that we know that we have been touched by you. And so, Father God, now in the name of Jesus again as we worship you in spirit as well as in truth. We pray, Father God, that everything that is said and done is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name we do pray. Let all of God's people say amen. Again, we thank you for joining with us. If you're watching us on Facebook, now will be a good time to hit that share button so you can share these blessings with somebody that you know. We also invite you to stand and sing along with our praise team as they lead us into the presence of the Lord. Come on, praise team.
are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. You're worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. 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 Mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty, 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 mighty. Mighty are the works of your hand. 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 Mighty, 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 mighty. 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 Above all names, you're worthy of all our praise. You're worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. 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 Mighty, 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 mighty. 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 Mighty, Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty, 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 mighty. 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 Mari, 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 Mari. Mari. Are the works of your hand. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for being a mighty and a merciful God. Once again, we just want to thank you and welcome you to Martin Street Baptist Church for our Sunday morning worship experience. And we just pray that something is said or done that not only blesses you today, but blesses you all the days of your life. And again, if you're being blessed, we just pray that you'll tell somebody what God is doing for you through the ministry here at Martin Street Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. As we do each Sunday, we want to call your attention to our announcements. For those of you at home, they should be scrolling across your screens. We always start by asking that you would please pray for our sick and our shut in. Again, we know that there are some among us that would like to be here, but the body would not allow them to be here. So those of us who believe in the power of prayer and know that the prayers of the righteous do avail as much. Again, we ask that you would please pray for those uh, that are in need so that when your time comes, somebody will pray for you. We're certainly asking special prayer uh, for Sister Yvonne Walker, who had recently had surgery, major surgery. Uh, we hope that she's watching and we certainly want to pray God's blessings over her. And we also want to say a special prayer for Brother Artis Davis. In the name of Jesus, we pray that God will be with them. Amen. We also want to uh, remind each and every person that are members of Martin Street Baptist Church that on each Monday at 6 p.m. we have our membership drop-in call. Again, uh, there's just a time for us to be able to see your smiling faces, see how you're doing, share information, uh, praise reports, and testimonies about the goodness of our God here in the land of the living. God is blessing us so much, and we just want to be able to share those blessings by seeing each other through the use of this technology. So, again, you don't have to stay on the whole time, but it would be great if you can just drop in and say hello. Amen. We also uh, want to just congratulate and just, uh, just, just thank God for our Blessings in a Bag ministry. On yesterday, our Blessings in a Bag ministry distributed food through the Interfaith Food Shuttle. And to, the, to God be the glory, we were able to serve 234 households here in Wake County, and which totaled up to 878 individuals. Again, um, and, and those numbers are probably low because, again, people come with a carload. Amen. <laughs> and we give, we give them what they can carry. 
And then some walk up and, and we give them what they can carry. Uh, we also gave our free mask on yesterday. And so to God be the glory again, uh, God is blessing us and those blessings are coming through us to our community. So we want to thank all of those that came out and volunteered. And we just want to again say to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. We want to extend a, a hearty congratulations uh, to the Goodson family. I saw Miss Peggy the other day, and she was just, just beaming with joy to let me know that they had their first grandchild. Amen. They welcome Anthony Goodson III into the world. Amen. Her son, Anthony Jr., and his wife, Winter Goodson, uh, they welcomed that bouncing baby boy. And so Anthony Sr. and Peggy, this is their first grandchild. Mrs. Mildred Goodson, a great grandmother, we just want to say congratulations to you and we pray God's blessings over the entire family. Amen? Amen. And as we come now to our weekly COVID-19 update, uh, for those of you at home, you can see this graph that is on, uh, on your screens. Uh, and you see these two numbers. I just wanted to highlight these two numbers for everyone just to put into your mind because you know when you listen to the news, they, some people want to convince us that the only reason people are dying is because we're doing so much testing. And they want to make it, and the implication is, if we didn't test, people wouldn't get the virus. As if the virus is spreading through the test. No, no, no. If you got it, you got it, whether you get tested or not. And so this, this chart, uh, it shows the daily cases, the daily cases of of coronavirus is here in North Carolina. And what I want you to see is on one month ago, one month ago, uh, exactly, we had a day. We had 1,346 cases a day. A, one, a month later, we now have 1,954 cases a day. I don't care how many tests you do. This is how many people came up positive. And that number, now I got this South Carolina math, and it may not be the best, but 1,900 is more than 1,300, which means that cases are still on the rise. So, again, we need to remember, as I always say, we need to be smart, and we need to be safe. And again, uh, for those that are still inquiring, when we're going to go back to church, all I can tell you is when it is safe for us to gather in God's house uh, in a safe manner without fear of catching a deadly virus, then we'll go back to church. Until then, we're going to keep on doing this online worship experience until God says so. Amen? Amen. We also want to thank those that have been so kind and gracious to contribute to the work here at Martin Street Baptist Church. Uh, we thank you so very much for your, your giving unto the Lord. Uh, and then we want to remind you that there are multiple ways that you can give unto Martin Street Baptist Church. First, you can mail in your contributions to Martin Street Baptist Church at 1001 East Martin Street, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27601. Or you can drop off your donations at our church office. Uh, someone is at the church office on Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you don't want to come into the building, you can always drop it into the mailbox that's attached to our Family Life Center. Uh, that box is being checked every day, and we will gladly receive those donations. Amen? Or you can download the Cash App application uh, to any electronic device. Once you download the Cash App application, if you put in dollar sign MSBC Donations, dollar sign MSBC Donations, there you can give as the Lord has given unto you, and 100% of those contributions will come to the church. Lastly, you can go to our church website, which is located at www.martinstreetbaptist.org. That is www.martinstreetbaptist.org. Once you get to the website, you'll see this page on the front page. And if you go up into the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the online giving tab. If you click on that tab, it'll bring you to this page. And there you will have multiple ways that you can give unto the Lord as the Lord has given unto you. But as always, you know, I remind you that God loveth a cheerful giver. And you are never more like God than when you give. And so, again, we want to thank those that have been giving. We want to encourage those that may not have given and remind you that all of your giving is a blessing to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Well, it's now that time in our worship experience for our morning scripture reading. And our scripture reading for today will be found in the book of Acts. Uh, the book of Acts 
the second chapter, starting at verse number 16. The book of Acts, the second chapter, starting at verse number 16. Those of you at home, it should be on your screen, and I will be reading from the King James Version of the Holy Text. There you will find these words written. It says, but this is what that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Verse 21 says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. God's word for God's people it is blessed and may that a blessing to us all. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Let us now look unto the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, again, Lord, we thank you. God, we thank you for just being able to wake up this morning. And Father God, we thank you that when we woke up, we were still clothed in our right minds. We thank you, Lord, that when we woke up, that we still had strength in these old bodies. We thank you, Lord, that when we woke up, that we were able to get up, Father God, and come into your presence and call on your holy and your righteous name. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, before we ask of anything, oh Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. Lord, we come asking for forgiveness. Lord, we come asking that you would forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Oh God, we pray that you will search our hearts, search our minds, search anything that is in us or around us, Father God, that is not pleasing and acceptable to you, Father God. And if you find it, Father God, we pray that you would remove it from us and cast it into that sea of no more. And then, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come interceding on behalf of the sick and the shut-in this morning. Oh, Father God, again, we know that you're, some of your people are sick this morning, Father God. Oh, Father God, we know that some of your people are dealing with aches and pains, sickness and disease, Father God. Oh, Father God, we know that this old body, Father God, it, it breaks down. It begins to decay. It begins to desire to go back to the ground from whence it came. Oh, Father God, but we know you as the potter, Father God. And so we ask right now that you would put your hands on us, Father God shape us, mold us, Father God, into who you would have us to be. Help us, Father God, heal us like nobody else can. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just pray that you would just continue to breathe the breath of life into us, Father God. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we're going to thank you in advance for the healing and the restoration that shall come from this prayer. Wherever your people are, Father God, now we pray that you would go and minister to them. Remind them, Father God, that they may be shut in, but they're not shut out from your goodness, your grace, and your everlasting mercy. And then, Father God, in the name of Jesus, again, we, we pray for these United States of America. Father God, we pray that you will bring us so that we are one nation under one God, indivisible with liberty and justice, Father God, for all. We just pray, Father God, for those elected officials that have been placed above us. We pray, Father God, that you would be with them, Father God, that you would give them wisdom from on high, but that you would also remind them that we are your children, the sheep of your pasture, and anything that they're doing unto us, Father God, they're doing it unto you. And then, Father God, again now, we pray for this worship experience. Oh, Father God, we pray now that you would stir up the gift that is inside each and every one of us. Oh, Father God, get us ready, Father God, for your word this morning, Father God, so that we might receive what thus saith the Lord. And so, Father God, again now, we thank you and we do praise you. 
And we pray, Lord, that everything that is said in this worship experience this morning is something that brings glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let all of God's people say amen, amen, amen.
said, I'll draw all men, not some, not good, not white, not black. He said, I'll draw all men unto me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless his name. Amen. As we come now to preaching and teaching from God's holy word, our scripture reading has already been read in your hearing and uh, for our pericope today, though, we're going to rest in verse number 21. Acts 2 and 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And with that in mind, for today, we want to talk about what we talked about on last week, the good news message. The good news message, and I guess today will be part two of the good news message. You know, for as long as the church has been around, there's always been a debate in the church about the authenticity of scriptures. You know, when we read our Bibles, you know, we don't give much thought to where it all came from. And oftentimes, we, we probably just assume that the Bible has always been this way. But the truth of the matter is, the Bible has evolved through the years. It's evolved from the oral traditions of the first century to the written text of the second century to being translated now into more than 1,534 different languages. But even with that, one of the great mysteries of the Bible is, why is the book of Acts located where it is? You see, those of us that know our Bibles know that the book of Acts is really Luke's sequel to the gospel according to Luke. And knowing that, one might ask the question, then why isn't the book of Acts right after the gospel according to Luke? Or one might surmise, then, well, if it's Luke's sequel to the gospel of Luke, why isn't the book of Acts called Luke 2? Those are great questions, and I wish I had all of the answers. The best answer that I've been given about why the book of Acts is located where it is is because the Gospels were given to us first because they were given to us to explain the manner of Christ. But then following that immediately we're given the book of Acts because that was given to us to explain the mission 
of the church. And our forefathers, again, one of the things that they wanted to make sure was always would be connected with the manner of Christ and the mission of the church. One of the most important missions of the church is given to us in the beginning of the book of Acts, which is to spread the good news gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, somebody needs to hear me on this church because far too often we forget about why God created the church in the first place. You see, when you forget about why God created the church in the first place, you start thinking that God created the church for you. That's when you start thinking that God created the church in order for us to go and have a good time. Well, God created the church as a place for us to go and fellowship with one another or for us to be seen or you know, for us to become a better person. But God told me to remind somebody that he created his church for his glory and for his good. God created his church in order to get his good news gospel message where he wanted it to go. You see, because if God had never created the church, the gospel never would have left Jerusalem. See, church, this mission that God gave to the church, this mission was so important that when God created the church, the first thing that he gave the church was power. Not just any power, but God gave the church that explosive, that dunamis, that dynamite power that could only come from heaven. That's why on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit showed up, Luke said that he showed up like clothing tongues of fire. And I believe the reason Luke describes the Holy Spirit like clothing tongues of fire is because the, when we come to church, God wants us to be so filled with the Holy Spirit that it feels like fire just shut up in our bones. And Again, I don't know about anybody else, but something begins to happen to me when I come to church. Doesn't matter if it's Phil or doesn't matter if it's just a few of us in here. Something begins to happen to me when I come to church. I get this burning sensation and it goes all over me. And even when I don't feel like it, I got to tell somebody about it. But I don't only do I have to tell somebody about it, but I got to tell somebody where I got it from. And if you've ever felt this feeling before, then you know that this is the kind of feeling that can only come from God. Why? Because this is the kind of feeling, church, that'll have you running when ain't nobody chasing you. It'll have you shouting when ain't nothing really going on. It'll have you dancing and ain't no music being played. Because this is the kind of feeling that can only come from God. And if you ever want to feel this kind of feeling, church, you got to do more than just go to church on Sunday morning. You got to do more than just listen to the choir, but you got to go down to Calvary's cross. You got to be dipped in the blood of the Lamb, and you got to say yes to my Jesus. And so with all that being said, as we come down to this second chapter in the book of Acts, some things have already happened by the time we get to verse 21. The Holy Spirit has already fell on them. Peter has already preached. And thousands have already been saved. And so the question we then ask is, now what? Now that all of this has happened, God, the way that you wanted to happen, now that the gospel has been preached in Jerusalem and thousands have been saved, now what, God? Well, the now what is now that the gospel had been preached in Jerusalem, it was time for the gospel to go everywhere else. But before the gospel could ever leave Jerusalem, Peter had to share verse 21. And don't ever forget verse 21. The first thing that Peter talks about here in verse 21 is the people of the gospel. The people of the gospel because Peter says in verse 21 that it shall come to pass that whosoever. If nothing else gets you excited this morning. You ought to be excited by that one word that says whosoever. Because in plain English all whosoever means is anybody. And what Peter was saying was that this good news message of Jesus Christ is open and available to anybody. And again that ought to get us all excited. 
Because it's good to know that nobody is excluded because of race or gender. Nobody's excluded because of their financial status. Nobody's excluded because of where they came from or what their background is. But the good news message of Jesus Christ is open to everybody. You see, church, I'm so glad that God doesn't do us like we do ourselves. I'm so glad God doesn't require credentials and qualifiers in order for us to be accepted by him. But no, God simply says, whosoever. And the best way that I can get this whosoever concept across to you is tell you to write out verse 21. Take out the whosoever and put in a if and then a blank. Go on down a little bit later and read it like this. If blank shall call upon the name of the Lord, then blank shall be saved. And the good news this morning is you can put anybody's name in the blank that you want. Doesn't matter who they are, where they're from, or what they've done. If you put their name in the blank, Jesus said they too can be saved. Y'all again, I know some of y'all have heard me say this before. Let me tell you one of the worst mistakes ever made in the world. Is that our white slave owners let us go to church. They should have kept us in the field. Because, see, we couldn't read, but we could hear. And something in my sanctified imagination tells me that, that they were up in church, standing up in the balcony. And somebody heard the preacher say in Acts 2 and 21 that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, before that, they could tell us anything they wanted to tell us. They could tell us that we were not human, and they would tell us that we were incapable of being loved. Oh, but once they heard that, somebody went to the preacher and said, can I be a part of that whosoever club? And when the preacher said, yes, whosoever means anybody can be saved. Oh, I believe our ancestors really begin to sing and shout. I believe they really begin to dance because something tells them that if God could deliver them from sin, then surely God could deliver them from slavery. And again, all I'm trying to tell somebody is right now, today, you can become a member of the Whosoever Club because right now, today, if you call on Jesus, you too can be saved. That's all you got to do. Sometimes we make it so, we, so technical to be saved. You know, you got to read the bylaws and you got to go through all of this stuff. You got to go to new members orientation. You got to do all that. Just, just, just call upon the name of the Lord. He said, and you shall be saved. The second, the second thing that Peter talks about in verse 21 is the possession of the gospel. You got, you got to take possession of this for yourself. Peter says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. And what Peter was saying is, yes, the good news gospel is available to everybody, but in order for you to get it, you got to take possession of it for yourself. Again, there is one limitation to this good news gospel. There, there is one. And the limitation is, it's not transferable. And you can't pass it down like an inheritance. Which means you don't get the benefits of the message because your parents got it. You don't get the benefit just because you went to church. But if you want to get the benefit of the message, then you got to call on the name of Jesus. And that's a call you got to make for yourself. I tell parents and grandparents all the time, oh, that's good that you paying a little money and keep your kid's name on the rolls at the church. That's nice. That's cute. That's, that's, that's good. Pray for your kids. Pray for your grandkids. But the one thing you can't do is you can't pray them into heaven. No, sir. Because Jesus said straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead it to life. And only a few, he said, will be able to find it. And what Jesus is saying is, yeah, that's good that you love your kids. That's good that you're praying for your kids. But when you get to the gate, you can't take them in with you. That's what Jesus is saying. That if you really love that grandbaby the way you say you love that grandbaby, you better bring them to church. If you really love your kids the way you say you love your kids, then you ought to make sure they get up off of their blessed assurance and go to church on Sunday morning and get to know Jesus. Let me see if I can make this thing plain about taking possession for yourself. Many of you know that I just this week had to drop my young baby girl off to college. But while she was going through this process, Ms. Wanda, here, here's what I told her. I said, baby girl, I'm your daddy. I love you. I do anything for you. But there's some things you got to do for yourself. I told her, look, look, I'll help you write your essays. I'll fill out your application. I'll get you reference letters. I'll even take you on visits. But at the end of the day, there's still some stuff you got to do for yourself. 
Some of y'all know God bless the child that can do for themselves. I told her there's some things I can't do for you, baby, no matter how much I love you. You're going to have to take them classes. You're going to have to do that work. You're going to have to study. Likewise, while their kids were growing up, look, I, I did all I could to introduce them to Jesus. I, did, I kept them in church. I kept them in ministry. And I taught them the word. But at the end of the day, when they get to heaven and they see Jesus, they ain't going to be able to get in because of who their daddy is or what their daddy did or how their daddy lived. But no, they're going to have to have a testimony that I called on Jesus for myself. That's a word for some people listening to me this morning. Because I know, man, I've been pastoring a long time now, and I know a whole lot of, whole lot of folks like to be cute and send a little money and keep their kids' names on the book, put in their kids' name for anniversary and all kind of stuff. They, oh, no, they members of the church. Sure, 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 sure. That's nice. That's cute. They're a member of the church, but they don't know Jesus for themselves. And that ain't going to be good enough. The third thing that he talks about as we hurry on is the person of the gospel. Peter takes this good news message a little bit further. He says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. And this is Peter's way of making it clear that there is no other name by which men must be saved. Those of us that know him, know Jesus, know that there's something about that name. Because not only is it the sweetest name I know, it's the greatest name I know. You see, because my Bible said that the day shall come that at that name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You know, one of the things Broadway, many people ask me, Pastor, why you get so loud and animated when you preach? Why, why you get so excited and sweaty and everything when you get up there and start preaching? The best answer that I've ever been able to give anybody is, is what my homiletics professor taught me. And I never forgot it. He said, let me tell you what real preaching is. And don't ever forget it. He said, real preaching is Jesus being poured out through the preacher's education, experience, and enthusiasm. See, I don't know about anybody else, but, but I say to myself that if I can get excited and, and if I can scream and holler at a football game, if you want to see me scream and holler, you catch me on Sunday when Dallas playing and they not winning. Or oh, I do some screaming and hollering. But if I can scream and holler for these guys on TV who don't know me and ain't never done nothing for me, then surely when I come into God's presence, I can scream and holler for God. I can jump and shout for Jesus. <clears throat> I tell folks, look, if God had never done nothing for you, then that, that's between you and God. If you think you've made it this far on your own without God's help, then you sit there and you act like God ain't never done nothing for you. But when I hear the name Jesus, something happened to me and I'm going to give God praise because God been too good for me to sit there and act like I made it on my own. You know, I, I tell people, if hearing the name of Jesus don't get you excited, look, look, that's, that's you. But don't try to tell me not to give God praise. Because the truth of the matter is, you don't know what God has done for me. You, you don't know where God has brought me from. And you definitely don't know what God has brought me through. So all I can tell you is, look, if you don't want to praise him with me, I don't mind praising him all by myself. So I'm going to get excited. I'm going to sweat. I'm going to get tired. I don't really care. Because I can buy some more clothes. God knows I can't get another Jesus. And again, somebody listening to me need to grab a hold of this. Because again, when you're going through what you're going through, it's good to be able to call on mama and daddy. It's good to be able to call your family deacon. It's good to even be able to call on your pastor. But at the end of the day, if you really want some help, you better learn to call on Jesus. Because I don't know about anybody else, but I'm glad I know where my real help come from. And I'm glad to know that all my help, I said all my help, coming from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth but then lastly lastly as Peter brings this thing home Peter talks about lastly here the product of the gospel see it ain't just a process God is trying to get something out of you as Peter closes the message and says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved 
That's it, church. That, that, that's the good news gospel message of Jesus Christ in a nutshell. Because the one thing that God wants for all of us is for all of us to be saved. And don't get me wrong, church. Let me tell you something. It's good when the good news make you feel good. But I'm here to tell you, if the good news only make you feel good, you ain't getting the good news. Because my Bible said that this good news cuts like a two-edged sword. And anybody ever been cut before, you know that it's going to hurt. And if there ain't no hurting in the good news, it ain't no good news. Because it's the hurting in the good news that causes you to change. Because when God cuts you with that good news message, either God is putting something in that you don't have or God is taking something out that you don't need. After God gets done performing that spiritual surgery on you, God said, just give it a little bit of time and you'll be better than you've ever been before. And that's why I tell people, look, I don't preach this good news message for anybody to feel good. It's good if you feel good, but if you don't feel good, it's still good. I don't preach the good news message to be liked by anybody or for anybody to get excited. I don't even preach it for you to be a better person. Because the good news message, again, is preached so that somebody might come running and asking, what must I do, what must I do in order to be saved? Because as Paul said in Romans chapter 10, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But... How can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear, Paul said, without a preacher? The number one job of any preacher is to spread the good news message of Jesus Christ. It ain't to get along with everybody. It ain't to win no popularity contests. It ain't to even go out and visit the sick. The number one job of the preacher is to preach the good news message of Jesus Christ. So what Peter is saying is, look, God is not just taking you through whatever it is that you're going through, but no, instead God is trying to produce a final product. And the final product that God is trying to produce in you is not a better person. But that's what people want to be. I, you know, I'm just trying to be a better person. No, try to be saved. I'm just trying to do better today than I did yesterday. No, try to be saved today. I'm just trying to put one foot in front of the other. Then try to be saved. God is trying to produce a saved person. Because in the, at the end of the day, here it is now, here it is for all of you. When God sees you, he really don't want to see you. But when God sees you, he really wants to see his son. Because when God sees you, if he sees you, all he sees is filthy rags. I know you got on your nice clothes. I know, I know you're dressed to the T's. I know you're, you're cleaner than a board of health. But God said that ain't nothing but filthy rags. But God says when I see you, if I see Jesus, then I see somebody in whom I'm well pleased. And again, if you want to know why God wants you to be saved, if I get ready to bring this to the close, anybody else is like, well, why does God want me to be saved? You can look at it from one of two ways. Either God wants to save you from something, or God wants to save you for something. One of the two. Because on the one hand, God wants to save you from spending eternity in a place called hell. God wants to save you from eternal damnation, save you from eternal judgment and torment. But all oh, thanks be to God. On the other hand, God says, I want to save you for myself. I want to save you for heaven. I want to save you for an inheritance that I want to pass down to you. And I want to save you for all eternity. So hear me now, church. Whatever, whether you want God to save you from something or save you for something, it's all the same. Peter said, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. And here it is now, when you call on Jesus, all you got to do is believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and that he is God's only son, and that he went and died on Calvary's cross, that he went down into a borrowed tomb, that he stayed there three whole days, and he got up early that Sunday morning with all power in his hands. If you can believe that, 
I'm here to tell you that you are saved. Doesn't matter what you've done. Don't matter how long you've been doing it. It don't matter who you've been doing it with. You too, my friend, can be saved. That is the good news message of Jesus Christ. Come on, let us bless the Lord. Wherever you are, just thank God. That somewhere along the way, we all heard that message. There's a many ways that it's been delivered. But as long as you heard it and you believed it, you need to know that you are saved. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, again, we thank you and we do praise you, Lord. We praise you for just being able to come once again and worship you in spirit as well as in truth. And now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we've heard that good news message. We pray, Father God, that your word, it reached somebody this morning who needs to be saved. We pray, Father God, that through the power of your word, Father God, somebody has said yes to you. Somebody has said, Lord, I want to be saved. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we also pray this morning that through your word, you were able to reach that backslider. That person that needs to be restored. That person that needs to come back to you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you would use that word, Father God, to bring them back to you, Father God. Bring them back into a right and loving relationship. And then, Father God, we pray that you would use that word, Father God, to connect believers with churches. If there's anybody, Father God, that heard that word this morning, Father God, and needs a church home, Father God, we pray that you would use that word to order their steps, Father God, towards a church home. Whether that church home is here in Martin Street Baptist Church or some other church, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would open the doors of your church and open them wide so that all your people might come inside. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, now we've done all that you've asked us to do. We've sung the songs of Zion. We've lifted up words of prayer. We've preached your holy word. And now, Father God, as we get ready to leave this place, but never from your presence, we do pray, Lord, that you would go with us and that you would lead God and direct us along the way. And Father God, we will be ever so careful to give you honor, to give you praise and to give you glory because Lord you deserve that and you deserve oh so much more in Jesus name we do pray let all of God's people say amen amen again we thank you for joining with us if you're watching on Facebook again please hit that share button so that somebody else might be blessed by this worship experience again we know that you could have joined a whole lot of other churches this morning, but we are so thankful that you decided to join us here at Martin Street Baptist Church. And so now as we get ready to leave, I always want to remind you of this, that whenever and wherever you are in Raleigh, remember, all roads lead directly to Martin Street. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>